A 5-cylinder engine is smaller and cheaper than a 6, smoother and more powerful than a 4 or is it the performance of a 4, with the fuel economy of a 6? The inline 5-cylinder engine can be any of those things. Manufacturers from Acura to Volvo have experimented with this odd-numbered design, with varying degrees of success, since the 1974. However in recent years, the popularity of the 5-cylinder has been decreased, as 4-cylinder engines are more efficient and powerful than the 5. Its compact design and warbling exhaust note have been part of a surprising variety of models. No automaker is more closely associated with 5-cylinder engines than Audi, and there's a good reason for that. The German company introduced the first-ever gas-powered 5-cylinder in a production car in 1976 and stuck with this odd layout for 20 years. But more importantly, Audi took the 5-cylinder racing with huge success. 5-cylinder engines are still in production and feature most prominently in the Audi TT RS and RS3. Despite their rarity, it's worth looking at the pros and cons of such engines to see why others would never touch them and still sticking with a standard inline 4. So in this video, let's discuss everything about a 5-cylinder engine in detail. <laughs> Let's start with straight 5-cylinder engine. The straight 5 engine, also referred to as an inline 5 engine, abbreviated as I-5. It is a piston engine with 5 cylinders mounted in a straight line along with the common crankshaft. Straight 5 engines are typically shorter than straight 6 engines, making them easier to fit transversely in an engine bay. Straight 5 are smoother running than straight 4, shorter than straight 6, and narrower than V engines and flat engines. Automobile manufacturers have occasionally used the straight 5 since the late 1930s, particularly in diesel engines from Mercedes-Benz, and also used in Audi's petrol engines. A four-stroke cycle engine fires its cylinders once every 720 degrees of the crankshaft rotation, where the crankshaft makes two complete rotations. If we assume an even firing engine, we can divide 720 degrees by the number of cylinders to determine how often a power stroke occurs. For a four-cylinder engine, 720 degrees divided by 4 equals 180 degrees, so there is a power stroke every 180 degrees which is two power strokes per revolution of the crankshaft. A V8 engine gets a power stroke every 90 degrees, 720 degrees divided by 8 equals 90 degrees, four power strokes for each crankshaft revolution. A given power stroke can last no more than 180 degrees of crankshaft rotation, so the power strokes of a four-cylinder engine are sequential, with no overlap. At the end of one cylinder's power stroke, another cylinder fires. In a one, two, or three-cylinder engine, there are times when no power stroke occurs. In a three-cylinder engine, a power stroke occurs every 240 degrees. 720 degrees divided by 3 equals 240 degrees. Since a power stroke cannot last longer than 180 degrees, a three-cylinder engine has 60 degrees of silence when no power stroke takes place. Five-cylinder engines have a crankshaft with 72-degree angles, and firing order of 1, 2, 4, 5, 3. The reason for this firing order is that the engine will have a strong tendency of rocking from end to end. This firing order results in the minimal rocking couple and is used by the Volvo, Audi, General Motors, and Honda G engines. On the other hand, the odd number of cylinders in a straight-five engine result in imperfect primary and secondary engine balance. Counterweights on the crankshaft can be used to reduce the vibrations from these imbalances. A five-cylinder engine gets a power stroke every 144 degrees. 720 degrees divided by 5 equals 144 degrees. Since each power stroke lasts 180 degrees, a power stroke is always in effect. In comparison to a four-cylinder engine, which fires every 180 degrees, the five-cylinder engine has a 36-degree overlap, 
meaning another power stroke has occurred before the crankshaft rotates to the 180 degree mark. This results in smooth power delivery instead of the relative jolting action of an inline four. As with three cylinder engines, the behavior of the reciprocation due to the journal spacing and firing order leads to a balance of the vertical forces within the engine. Because of uneven levels of torque during the expansion strokes, divided among the five cylinders, there are increased secondary order vibrations. At higher engine speeds, an uneven third order vibration from the crankshaft occurs every 144 degrees. Because the power strokes overlap, a five cylinder engine may run more smoothly than a non overlapping four cylinder engine, but only at limited mid range speeds, with lower second and third order vibrations. Every cylinder added beyond 5 increases the overlap of firing strokes and makes for less primary order vibration. An inline 6 gets a power stroke every 120 degrees, so there is more overlap than in a 5 cylinder engine. However, this increase in smoothness of a 6 cylinder over a 5 cylinder engine is not as pronounced as that of a 5 cylinder over a 4 cylinder engine. The inline 5 loses less power to friction as compared to an inline 6. VR5 engine. Volkswagen introduced the first V5 engine, though this engine is not an actual twin bank V engine, but rather a VR5 or staggered bank straight 5 engine, and therefore not a true V5. Volkswagen never called its narrow angle V5 as VR5, but it came from the same VR family. The 2.3 liter V5 was essentially a VR6 with one cylinder removed. Volkswagen's VR5 engine was a truly unique piece of automotive history developed in the 1990s. While functioning much like an inline-5 engine, the VR5 definitely was its own animal with three cylinders on one side and two on the other. The VR5 required a whole bunch of complex engineering to keep it balanced and innovative design decisions to get it to breathe. The exciting thing is the cylinders are at a 15-degree angle. To get the 15 degree cylinders not to contact each other, they pushed the cylinder outboard and offset them. By doing that, the centerline of the cylinder is not in line with the crankshaft centerline anymore. That offset changes the angularity of the rod's motion, creating a unique set of motions different for the upstroke and downstroke. The VR5 was initially made with two valves per cylinder as the AGZ engine from 1997 until 2000, resulting in a 10-valve engine producing 148 horsepower at 6,000 rpm and 209 newton meter of torque at 3,200 rpm. The engine was updated in 2000 as the AQN-AZX engine adding 4 valve per cylinder and variable valve timing, resulting in a 20-valve engine producing 168 horsepower at 6,200 rpm and 220 newton meter of torque at 3,300 rpm. The engines have a firing order is the same as an inline 5 cylinder. 1, 2, 4, 5, 3. The VR5 engine is a lot like an inline 5 cylinder that got smashed together and the cylinders bunched up. Dynamically, how everything works are very similar to an inline 5. The V5 engine was developed as a direct result of significant changes to the regulations for the World Championship Motorcycle Road Racing 500 cubic centimeters class for the 2002 season. The name of the class was modified to MotoGP, and while two-stroke engines remained limited to 500 cubic centimeters and four cylinders, four-stroke engines were now allowed to be as large as 990 cubic centimeters and from three to six cylinders, which led many teams to switch to four-stroke designs. A V5 engine is a five-cylinder piston engine where the cylinders share a common crankshaft and are arranged in a V configuration. The Honda RC211V, a MotoGP racing motorcycle, used a V5 engine. The transversely mounted 990 cubic centimeters engine had three cylinders at the front and two at the rear, making the bike usefully narrower between the rider's knees, while the extra crankshaft width compared with a four was negligible. The RC211V had two dual overhead cam cylinder heads, one with 12 valves and one with 8 valves, with each cylinder having two fuel injectors. 
It peaked at 260 horsepower at 16,500 RPM, that's 4.3 horsepower per cubic inch, or 262 horsepower per liter, naturally aspirated. Finally, a 75.5 degree V angle allowed perfect primary balance. The narrower V angle of 75.5 degrees results in a shorter engine. With one cylinder positioned between the other four, the pistons cancel out each other's primary or primary coupled vibration and eliminate the need for a balancer. A five-cylinder was allowed the same minimum weight as a four, while lighter pistons would give access to higher revs, in line with Honda's long-standing racing philosophy. In five seasons of MotoGP racing, the Honda RC211V won 48 out of 82 contested races. It also won three Rider World Championships in 2002, 2003, and 2006, and four constructor titles in 2002, 2003, 2004, and 2006. It was Henry Ford that developed the five-cylinder engine in the 1930s. However, according to modern-day sources, it wasn't a popular engine, so it was never used in any particular vehicle. Forty years later, serial production of this interesting concept arrived, which combines some of the traditional advantages of four- and six-cylinder engines. The 1938 launch of 3RO trucks introduced a straight-five diesel engine to replace the previous straight three engine built for the Italian and German armed forces during World War II and later for civilian usage, the truck remained in production until 1950. The first mass production straight five passenger car engine was the Mercedes-Benz OM617, a naturally aspirated 3.0 liter engine introduced in the Mercedes-Benz 300D models. It was a big shift from tradition and models with a sight on the nose and an OM617 diesel became the object of desire. Other mass-production straight-five diesel engines include the VM Motori 531, the Land Rover TD5, the Ford Duratorque 3.2, and the Fiat JTD 2.4 turbo diesel engines. Audi introduced the five-cylinder diesel in 1978, becoming the first to offer the concept to fans of the most popular fuels. The four-wheel drive and five-cylinder have remained inseparable to this day. Several Volkswagen-branded straight-five engines were produced, with an unusual V-shaped five-cylinder concept, in 1981. The final Volkswagen straight-five petrol engine was the Volkswagen EA855, 2.5-liter, 20V engine, used in the North American Passat models, until 2014. In 1989, Volkswagen developed the 2.8 VR6, with 174 horsepower, it is much shorter and little wider than the regular one. The cutting off of the cylinder in 1997 resulted in the 2.3 VR5 with 150 horsepower built into the Passat. The larger models of Fiat, Lancia, and Alfa Romeo have been using several different petrol and diesel engines of this concept for 20 years. The five-cylinder diesel of the VM factory was installed in Jeep Grand Cherokee long before Fiat became the brand owner. The Volvo modular engine was introduced in the 1991 Volvo 850 sedan and was used in various Volvo models, along with the Ford Focus ST and Ford Focus RS models. Ford has a five-cylinder diesel designed for delivery and pickup vehicles. The Rover TD5 diesel, codenamed Storm, was installed in the Discovery and Defender from 1998 to 2007. In Europe, the less well-known petrol five-cylinder engines are Honda and General Motors, which are mainly installed in models for the American market. Very few motorcycles have used five-cylinder engines. However, the Honda RC148 and Honda RC149 125 cubic centimeters four-stroke racing motorcycles use straight-five engines based on the 50 cubic centimeter straight twin engine from the Honda RC116 Grand Prix racing motorcycle. These straight five engines were unusual because they were configured as straight six with one of the middle cylinders removed. A five cylinder engine is longer and more expensive to manufacture than a comparable four cylinder engine. Still some manufacturers 
feel these costs are outweighed by its greater capacity in a smaller space than a six-cylinder. A disadvantage of a straight five over a straight six engine is that a straight five engine is not inherently balanced. A straight five design has free moments or vibrations of the first and second order, while a straight six has zero free moments. This means that no additional balance shafts are needed in a straight six. That intrinsic inertial behavior is then enhanced by the length of the engine compared to an inline four leading to an engineering complexity that many manufacturers decide to shy away from. So that's it about the five-cylinder engines. What do you think about this engine? Or do you have a five-cylinder vehicle? Tell me in the comments.